recording? Yeah. Okay, welcome to Meet Your Monsters. If you've ever maintained an erection for the duration of The Exorcist, then this is the podcast for you. <laughs> you sick <laughs> My name is Avery Maintain Nicken. an erection right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, no. <laughs> That's why the table's floating. <laughs> My name is Avery Megan. Kathleen. I'm Matt. Colby. Sarah. Derek. For you at home, Meet Your Monsters is a podcast in which I show my friends horror movies that I love, and we find out if they love them too, or if they just think my taste in movies sucks. This week's movie is the 1988 Phantasm II, written and directed by Don Coscarelli, and starring the lovable ice cream man Reggie Bannister, <laughs> the tall evil fuck Angus Grimm, and replacing Michael Baldwin was James Lee Gross. Gross. Although I don't know if you would say Le Gross. It's Le Gross. Le Gros. James Allegro. <clears throat> okay, so I saw this movie, um, and I might have talked about this the first time we did, when we did Phantasm 1. Uh, we lived in this house with this lady named Sheila, and uh, our whole family lived there because she was cool and let us stay with her. And uh, she had Phantasm 1 and 2 on an old VHS, and I would watch them together, and it was like the greatest fucking... While your brother was trying to get laid. While my right? brother was yeah. trying to hook up with the daughter, that sort of thing. <laughs> Um, but it was cool. They had like a hot tub and a little waterfall in the house and stuff. It was like wow. a nice place. In the house? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it was cool. Classic. Could you watch Indoor Phantasm waterfall? from the hot tub? The waterfall wasn't like a huge, like, well, cascade. But it was like, here's a wall. So it was like the water would come sink. down. <laughs> the sink was It was like rock. There was fish in there. There used to be fish, but I guess the cats ate them. So oh, gross. But it was real nice. They had a dance floor and a bar and all this stuff. Wow. Nice. Yeah, it was cool. That's And that's why they she let us stay there, I think, was because she had plenty of room. And yeah, okay. her husband had MS, so, so um, you know, she would take care of him and... And we'd hang out. So she might have enjoyed the company. Hmm. Whatever happened, uh, eventually her and my parents had some sort of epic battle and Uh-oh. not friends anymore. That doesn't have anything to do with Phantasm. <laughs> <laughs> Abe trivia. Um, but yeah, it was, it was a great place for a while. I'd play with my Ninja Turtles and watch creepy fucking Phantasm <laughs> movies. And I think uh, what sealed it for me when watching Phantasm 2 was when the sphere flies into the guy's back and it kind of flings him all around. And then when they roll him over, it's like sticking out of his mouth. Like boring mm-hmm. into his yeah. back. Oh, so. And I remember awesome. as a little kid, I was like, this is the greatest movie I've ever <laughs> fucking seen. Oh, my God. Yeah, it was awesome. <laughs> um, what did everybody think? I thought it was great. Great? I liked it. I did yeah. not think I was going to like it from the beginning. It was it was fun. I also like saw him when I was much younger. And like that's the only part I really remember about any of them is the spheres and how awesome they were. So I definitely feel you on that. It's just like the spheres are the most awesome part. And it's like the lightsaber. Yeah. You know, right? It's a, such a yeah, It just does everything. Mm-hmm. Whatever it needs to do, it just does it. I liked the special <coughs> effects in it, but other than that, I really didn't care what was happening story-wise. <laughs> didn't do it for you? Just no. Um, Kathleen? <laughs> I liked it just because the whole time everything is ridiculous. Yeah. It was entertaining. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, as a as a uh, thing here, since we're trying to make this the best podcast we can possibly make it, yeah. I have written these uh, introductions to our little segment. So I'm going to be Ooh. trying this for the first time today. If these suck, please tell me, <laughs> and we'll try something new. Yeah, just, yeah. We'll fix it. Um, <laughs> and I've tried to make them really like melodramatic and ridiculous. Um, and I will start off. Uh, follow us through the darkness of our wasted and festering memories as we struggle re- to recall the movie we just watched with this week's Sinister Synopsis. That didn't suck at all. Huh? Thank that? you. Yeah, that's, <laughs> pretty, that's pretty good. Yeah, I hopefully it. I will Pure get that down. And we'll, <laughs> we will. But you'll, you'll, you'll see i got a bunch of these. But I wanted to clearly define the segments as we, mm, as we go. go through them. Instead of just me going, hey, do that thing, <laughs> like, like you did last week. Okay. Now, doing a doing a synopsis for a phantasm movie is is rough because half the shit doesn't make any sense. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Derek pointed out, yeah, 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 how like it God ends. Look at sense. <laughs> yeah, like shit changes from movie to movie, so it doesn't Seemed really seem shit changes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but in in this movie, um, the the gist of it is that. Um, Mike has has spent the last seven years in some sort of mental institution because <laughs> his brother might or might not have been killed by the tall man. 
I mean, Bori was in a car he, accident. Reggie he was, was. <laughs> yeah, he's definitely dead. But Reggie might or might not have blown up Mike's house in order to save him from the tall man. Yeah. It's not an event he can recall later, <laughs> but it might or might not have happened. Apparently, Reggie had a family. <laughs> what well, I gotta say about that scene, though. <laughs> Finally, somebody jumped out the fucking window. <coughs> yes. That would be my first move in every so horror movie. Would you go like, head first, though? I would go whatever first, as long as I jumped out that fucking window, because everybody goes and hides. You're like, two stories I would just, up, though. I don't give a rat's ass. I'd jump out Colby, that fucking you're gonna window, die so and all good. they'd see is just my ass running down the street, just like, good luck, y'all. You'd be limping your ass. <laughs> <I'm> whatever. <laughs> I would be the guy limping away from Jason while they're all getting chopped up. What I thought was so funny was that Okay, so Reggie's cornered by what is essentially zombie Jawas. No, let's kidding, just call it like we see it—the fucking <laughs> zombie Jawas. Yeah, zombies, they're cool. they're bigger versions of uh, what's the what's the thing in like uh, attached to the guy's stomach in Total Recall? Oh, oh the tattoo or something like that. Codal, yeah, I thought it started with yeah, a yeah, M. yeah, 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 cool. I don't really think of Quetzalcoatl. Fuck yeah, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> but that they look like <laughs> big versions it. of him. I, can I see think. That. I can see yeah, that. Yeah, I think it was cool because you didn't. You didn't Squato. Squato. Yeah, Squato. Yeah. You didn't see them in the first one, right? You just saw like a little glow. You saw them a little bit because remember they took them. the hood off of the one, and it was their friend that died in the beginning. Yeah, but you didn't get to see their little like demon faces, and I appreciate that about yeah. them. Right away, you see <laughs> their little like twisted demon faces. <laughs> yeah. I enjoyed that. What was awesome about this, though? Okay, so Reggie finds himself cornered by these little things. And he's like, fuck it, I'll just blow up Mike's house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah he, he's I gotta say, like, those little fuckers were coming out of the woodwork. And yeah, they like, were I all could sit over. here and try to kill them all, but fuck it. And, yeah. and you know, so so essentially he rescues Mike from the tall man. They both jump headfirst out a two-story window. Not a scratch on either of them. <laughs> because it's not that far. It was like 15 it's... feet. No. No. <laughs> no, well, no, two, no. A story, a two-story two is it's, ten feet. Yeah, it's about halfway up. You mean one story is one ten feet? One story is ten feet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm saying a, each story is ten feet. So a two-story would be twenty feet, and the window is about halfway up the wall. That's fifteen feet. Uh, that ain't shit. I'll do it right now. Have you ever jumped <laughs> off a ten foot roof? Let's take this. Quite, let's take this microphone okay. outside off of Abe's house. Oh, I'm gonna jump off there. Despite Colby's estimation, there would have been. Cuts from the glass, perhaps at least a sprained ankle they or had, broken arm. They were fully clothed. Some, so. sort of, some sort of injury <laughs> might have occurred. But they went first, though. If they had hung so out what? the window and then dropped, they could have cut six feet off. This, was like, this wasn't like tempered glass. It yeah. probably just broke and like, uh, yeah. made a break for it. Well, I like to think that Reggie's just so tough that like he yeah. turned out to be. He surprised yeah. me. He landed I never nobody, saw the first yeah. movie, but he sure he sure. He's nobody, also a parkour expert. Nobody <laughs> pulls off the male pattern baldness with long hair look. Yeah, quite he caught right. that that laundry shoot pretty quickly and easily. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, he's about to pull the shit up. He's motivated. He is the the horror movies John McClane. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna. Say Didn't it. you say it's John McClane or Reggie yeah. Bannister? <laughs> yeah, John McClane or Reggie Bannister. Anyway, so so uh, after this happens, you find <coughs> out that it didn't happen at all. <laughs> In Wait, perfect it, phantasm style. It didn't happen. No, it did not. Reggie so he... doesn't remember oh, it at all. Oh, that's what happened. I was like, yeah. Why is that another house blowing up? Yeah. But yeah. Where, how did he escape then? Okay, I'll tell you. So, okay. so, <laughs> so Mike uh, comes out of the mental hospital having had these weird dream connections with some girl he doesn't know. Yeah. Who um, knows him? Who he mm-hmm. knows through his dreams, but has never met. Kind of like before internet dating this is how <laughs> just like get a on. um and so he, of course when you first get out of the middle hospital the best thing to do is go dig up graves so he's That's digging right. up graves and reggie's like oh man what are you doing you know none of this really you're crazy that sort of thing and and he's like you know reggie has no recollection of ever saving him in the first fucking place <laughs> oh. he still says that his brother jody died in the car crash um even though in the end of the first movie, uh, Jody and, and Mike had killed the tall man by dropping him in a well. Mm-hmm. Um, Jody somehow oh, died man. in a car crash. It was on his head, but it was a dream. It's, it's, did he die, did he he die in the first movie? Dream. He did, yeah. But wow. they never showed it. It was, it was all phantasm. It was it was phantasm. Um, phantasm <laughs> logic. Yeah. What I'm assuming happened is the tall man messed with their memory. Because why would he still be after him? If like none he, of that shit he happened. wasn't after him, that is though, a was he? Hmm? no he was remember at the end of the first one he pops he 
comes to the oh. mirror and grabs them. Yeah. And that was how the second one started, was they showed that scene. Okay. Um, the thing about it, that's a perfectly reasonable explanation that was never given to us, but I'll buy it, because well, there's you nothing else. Your brain okay. yeah. um, Make up some stuff. Anyway, what, what this amounts to is that Mike predicts, oh my god, you have to get your family out of the house. Reggie apparently has a family. He never did in the first one. They never mentioned it. His house blows up, and Reggie sees that, oh my god, Mike saw this Wait, coming. so his family was in the house? Yeah. Mm-hmm. He didn't seem broken up at all. No, so, no, no. Well, well he he clearly he was yeah. a shitty dad because the whole first movie he's just driving around playing guitar with Jody and <laughs> yeah. shit. Yeah, so so yeah, at the funeral, cool. Reggie's like, Mike, you totally saw it coming, man. We gotta get these guys. That's and, what and they, they were doing. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. So so essentially shit. So essentially what this is is a road trip movie where the two yeah. are pursuing the tall man who is essentially baiting them. He's saying, Yeah, come find me, motherfucker. He even leaves messages in the skin of these people where the little face will come up and tell him where he's at so they oh, know. Yeah. And uh so they rig up all these fancy weapons like a four barrel shotgun and a fucking flamethrower. Yeah. Four barrel shotgun. One was use fucking awesome. It was fucking. What do you think awesome. the blowback on that would be like? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not not for uh, not for Reggie. Not for yeah. Reggie. <laughs> yeah, he's all man. Okay, so so they're pursuing the tall man, and and what is happening is um, the tall man is going from small town to small town, essentially emptying out the graves and killing all the people and making ghost towns. So he's taking all the people. He's using the corpses to kill the living, as we saw from the the grandpa killing the grandma after yeah. the funeral. Do you think that was supposed to be a sad funeral, or do you think there's just not the budget to hire a bunch of extras to yeah, the right. funeral? Yeah, that guy didn't have any friends, and what yeah. I thought was everyone else in the town was gone. That's good. The, the whole place was empty, so who's who was there yeah. to show up? I bet the first funeral was an awesome a party. Lot of people. The, you know, by the time they got to that old fuck, everyone was dead already. I like the priest just stabbing the body like. But why did he do that? Because yeah. okay, he didn't want the guy coming sense. back. Yeah. Well, no, because they've like people have died from car accidents and stuff, and I'm sure they've been shredded up and he's grown maybe back. Maybe just well, well, like, he didn't maybe he's just he vampire, vampire logic. No, like, no. He's got like schematics of dead bodies. Because like, hmm. he had the yellow stuff in him already. What I think was going on with the priest was that was embalming fluid, the yellow stuff. Yeah. Remember, we saw him getting embalmed. So the yellow stuff doesn't oh. reanimate him. It's just I embalming think fluid. the honey mustard looking stuff reanimates him. That <laughs> stuff that came out of him was just embalming fluid. What? Oh, what's going that's, on? That's a fine line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. what's that happening? stuff was kind of like Mountain Dew. Yeah. And embalming fluid was. <laughs> the priest was initially in cahoots with the tall man. I mm-hmm. assume the tall man had threatened him into it. And you'll notice this because... But he didn't know who he was later. Who are you? Well, he didn't know, but but no, he said, "Who are you to judge God's yeah, creatures?" Yeah. Or something like yeah. That. Oh, never mind. Oh. And and so what? Go back I, I said listening right after. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so you know, there's the tall man and his people essentially have the run of the place. I assume that they've just kind of whooped the poor priest into submission, or mm. they keep him around as a as a figurehead so the people will come to him. But you notice that there are artifacts around, like the priest. Uh, opens this case and there's something in there that like hurts him and we find out later that's where the spears are contained mm. and so the priest was definitely and that's why he says like I, he's drinking a lot and he's not happy with himself he says I can't let this continue mm. and he tries to keep the corpse from coming back and the grandma um, was all I'll devastated which I'm thinking, I think I've been like, well, what the hell? Like, why'd you have to stay? He's already dead. Well, and yeah. she didn't acknowledge it afterwards. I'd be like, hey, granddaughter. took a nap. So and so just <laughs> stabbed, priest just stabbed my husband. Yeah. Meanwhile, Reggie and Mike are picking up hitchhiker chick that you know Reggie's trying to bang right off the bat because um, that's what he's into. That's probably why I was. And like, I questioned oh, why anybody would bang Reggie Baxter, <laughs> but then we found out later that it's because he's hardcore. Well, any guy's a heavy cool. crazy. Like, like, I uh, wouldn't. Uh, like, crazy, he's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Where's all that's probably why he wants to distraught about his family. He's like, I'm gonna get me some of that sweet road <laughs> poon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. So Mike and uh, okay, so this this is the <coughs> weird part is the the tall man tells this girl. Does anyone I, was her name Lisa? Liz. Liz. The blonde. Yeah. 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 Liz. Liz. Okay, and uh, and he's he's luring her to this mortuary, which is the Paragord Cemetery, um, and 
And the only thing I can see here is that is he trying to get them together? Mike and That's this girl? Because there's really no Cupid. reason for it. <laughs> and and he's had several opportunities to kill her and he doesn't do it. It's like it's like he just takes her as bait for Mike. Yeah. It's it's sort of, yeah. yeah. And even even if Mike's in the same house, he'll kidnap that girl yeah. <laughs> and be like, No, come over here. Which Again, doesn't yeah, make a lot of sense. Mickey was just trying to get space between Mike and that four-barrel shotgun. It might have been. <laughs> yeah. So so eventually Mike and Liz meet up, uh, and the tall man shows up, and he kidnaps her and takes her back to the cemetery. And so Reggie and Mike get all their gear together, and they are chasing him in the Himikuta. And the worst thing that could ever happen happened. The car wrecks and blows up. blows up. May it rest in peace. It would be like if the, the Millennium Falcon got The Reggie. <laughs> yes, it's exactly. It's just <laughs> a fucking crime. <laughs> and the fact that they, you know, I'm sure that was like some sort of stunt car, but they blew up one of those things. It just hurts. Mm -hmm. And you'll notice they didn't get a single other chick after that car got Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was... <laughs> <laughs> the the chick he did ever. get turned on. That was the end. She's like, oh, you ain't got no color. Yeah. I guess it's a good time to tell you I'm a fucking demon. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so, so they go into the the uh, mortuary <coughs> to get Liz back, and they just well, getting... she went in there after her grandma. Well, this was a, that was the first time. Yeah. Uh, the second time was he kidnapped her. After he kidnapped her, because yeah. she's she's about to be cremated. Yeah, but I was just thinking when she got her grandma, I'm like, your grandma only only had like three, four years <laughs> left. Like, what are, you, what are you going after her for? Let her. But she don't want to oh. see him as a little Java. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> um. So so Liz is about to be cremated by another creepy looking guy who works for the tall man. He he had some regular sized people this time around. Yeah. And some guys in gas masks that would dig mm -hmm. graves and stuff. Who knows what he's got. Apparently he's recruiting some better henchmen. Mm -hmm. He needs some people that can uh, keep up with his long stride, reach I think. the taller shows. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so so all kinds of crazy shit goes on. Reggie gets in a chainsaw fight with a dude. <laughs> Did that mean crazy. chainsaws that big? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, like, yeah. for cutting down, like, redwoods, they're, like, yeah. six-foot-long chainsaws. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. But, and that was a badass scene. Not since that's uh, like that was when they went a little on the humor side, like more so. It was more action yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was when it reminded me like of Evil Dead a little bit. Yeah, yeah. which they referenced. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. there was even some Evil Dead esque shots, like when they're following the sphere and it's mm -hmm. it's going through the doors mm -hmm. as they're closing the doors. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, you know, quite a few little little nods to Evil Dead there. Uh, Remember when they could get together in the dream world? Yeah. yeah, I was like, man, that'd be, the, Let's move. that'd be the perfect time to try out all kinds of weird no. sexual shit. <laughs> because like there'd be no repercussions when you woke up. That's like if she didn't like it, all that's okay. No Your butt's gonna be fine sweet. when you wake up. No dream babies, all right. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> <laughs> always, always thinking. Although, yeah. although uh, Nightmare on Elm Street Four was called The Dream Child. So shit can go wrong. Did that happen? Is that what happened? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so as they're as they're rescuing Liz and Reggie's uh, narrowly avoiding getting his balls chopped off by a chainsaw by jumping the blade from a shelf. That was pretty oh, yeah. cool. Um, uh, Mike has discovered a doorway that has a key in the shape of one of these spheres, and he he takes one of these spheres from from a door. That scene was badass too, because I liked how like the pinned his hand up against it, and he saw the gold the door hatchet. coming, uh -huh. and he knew that like, that was the serious one. He's like, "Fuck!" Yeah. and grabs a hatchet and cuts his own hand off. So, like, let's get the fuck out of here, guys. <laughs> and we should talk about the difference between the orbs there. The first, the silver orbs. Had like the small blade and the and then the two like Side forks, yeah. 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 And, and then this had a drill that came out yeah. and like sucked their brains out. And that the gold one was the one that had like the boring. Yeah, the thing gold one had all oh. kinds of saw blades and yeah. crazy fucking devices. It had a fucking laser, laser? Uh. shot a mouse oh, with a yeah. laser. There was all mm -hmm. kinds of stuff going on. It had oh, the right. same sort of like. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was crazy. The rat that freaked Liz out more than any other yeah. thing she's seen that day. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> so, so well, the other thing I like about that though 
is like the, it seems like the orbs have a mind of their own like they're not controlled by the tall man because he was getting the tall man's henchmen like the one orb did and one, the other orb's like oh don't worry bro I got your back I'm coming here well, let's finish the, this motherfucker off the one orb went after the tall man too yeah, yeah. oh that's right yeah I it's squish but only because Mike threw it at him yeah. but here's what I think they are I think they're, they're security <laughs> systems Mm-hmm. And that what they do is they fly around and, and essentially will fuck up anything. And like he said, they're safe if they're embedded in flesh. So what I assume they would do is kill something and then wait for the tall man to come and collect the dead. Yeah. And this is all speculation. I have no idea. That's just what I assume. <laughs> but, Hire Abe for the, for, for <laughs> the next movie. So, so what he does is he, you know, because once the... The orb, the golden orb, went through, like, steel doors. It, it would, like, cut through walls and stuff. But it stopped once it was stuck in that guy's mouth. Yeah. Because, like they said with the other one, once it's embedded in flesh, it just sits there. Yeah. So that's what I think they are, is they're a security system. Well, but the golden one was still trying to come out of his mouth, but, the, like, the, the spikes got caught inside his mm. cheeks. Yeah. So it couldn't cool. come out. So, like, it was stuck <laughs> there because the spikes were all stuck in his cheeks. You could tell that well. right there was Greg Nicotero's handiwork. Mm. That guy, he loves doing that shit. That bloody shit. Stuff coming out of the mouth. Yeah. Um, Balls in mouth. <laughs> <laughs> so eventually, Reggie and Mike and Liz all meet up together. Mike and Liz, or Reggie finds them. And uh, they're investigating the tall man's uh, portal to the other world, which... Having encountered this in the first one, they do the same stupid shit where yeah. they like try to look well, in there and stuff. But you didn't say they got the orb back from the hand that was stuck in the wall the guy chopped off. Yeah. And I noticed in that scene, they're always very practical about how they do stuff. Because you notice he, like, when he's like, oh, gross, it's a hand. He like went and got a towel and like draped <laughs> over and like, boop, and, made and got it out. It. And then like they always do that shit. Like, they're always like, oh, let's cover this up first. Okay, now let's blow the door open and all that shit. Yeah. Very practical people. Mm. <laughs> Smart. Uh, they got their shit together. They work smarter, not harder. <laughs> um, so, so once they're inside this secret chamber with the portal, they're getting ready to just, I assume, light it all on fire when the tall man creeps up behind them. And uh, Reggie and, and Mike are kind of sucked into the portal, and they're both just hanging on. Reggie's actually laying on the ground of the Crimson Planet, and one of the dwarves is naked coming from the barrel and crawling towards him all slimy and goopy and naked. Gross. That's when he really looks like Quato, I think. That's what really got <laughs> yeah. me. I was like, that looks I like... think he should give him a chance, because maybe once they're through that portal, they're actually, like, friendly. Like, they're like, hey, we're home. Yeah, like, come here. Like, I've got ice cream. Hi. Come back to my place. <laughs> yeah, whatever Watch it was. Your goddamn the, <laughs> get away from me. The whole landscape was, like, rock and rock, wind. It was awful. Yeah. Yeah, I really want to know where they filmed that, because there's a lot of rock. Yeah. That's pretty cool, yeah. That'd yeah. be a pretty cool landscape. South yeah, Flats. neat. Uh, the warlock books underneath it. <laughs> so, so <coughs> while Liz is uh, about to be embalmed by the tall man, Mike and uh, Reggie work their way out of it. With out his of strong the, ankle muscles, right? Yeah. yeah. Reggie's mm. badass. Yeah. Foot, <laughs> foot control. Foot, yeah. yeah. Um, was he born badass? Was he a badass in the first movie? I think just the hard times of being an ice cream man, <laughs> uh, putting up with all those kids. Some hard time, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, he's just like. After all that, I can handle anything. <laughs> uh, anyway, they they rescue Liz, jump the tall man. Mike throw, takes the spear out of the, the door and chucks it, and it goes flying into the tall man's head. And he just squirts out a bunch of goop, and he just pulls it out of his head and smashes it yeah, like Dr. the badass that he is. <laughs> Which, like well, I wonder, yeah. though, like... Are they just really flimsy, or is he really strong? He's that strong. He's Remember before? Yeah. 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 But did, did anybody ever try squishing it? No. Did anybody try squishing the orb? Like, before I'm like, they're like, squish. Like, oh, we're fine, guys. Let's go kick the tall man's ass. I, I'm going to guess that they're the really world. difficult to squish. <laughs> and then what's Something weird, think about. from the hole in his head, this weird tentacle comes out and starts snapping Woo! at my yeah, head. Like, little, like, sharp I think he was just to de- demonstrate, like, you can't really kill this dude. Yeah. Mm. Like, even and, you put a hole in his head, he'll come out with a little pincer and get you. Mm-hmm. And what I liked about that is... We don't actually know what he is. Uh-huh. You know, he, mm-hmm. he looks human, but he's clearly not. He, you know, bleeds honey mustard. He's, he's from another <laughs> planet, so you never know what the fuck is going on over there. And I think it, it was just that. I think it was just a taunt, like, "Ha, ah, check this out!" Right? Yeah. And uh, <laughs> you see this shit? Yeah. <laughs> you can't mess with me. Yeah. Earlier in the in the film, Reggie had dumped a bunch of 
hydrochloric acid into the embalming fluid to prevent him from reanimating more corpses. And it just so happens Liz stuffs this thing in his neck and they turn it on and pump the tall man full of acid and he dissolves in a uh, yeah. his balloon pops an awesome eye popping um, yeah. melty sort fantastic. of way. Mm-hmm. And uh, they think all is well because their hitchhiker friend Alchemy that they they picked up earlier comes by and picks him up in a hearse. How she knew where they were going, I don't really know. Uh, actually, you yeah. you know now, but whenever you like get a more story after like the drive away, you're like oh these guys are fucked. Yeah, yeah. It's not, <laughs> yeah. It's not good. And at, yeah, as they're driving away, she turns out to be a corpse herself. And was she the dark man? I Dar- tall man. <laughs> no, <laughs> tall no, I think she's just one of his minions. Tall dark. Well, because when if, he opened up, he's like ha. Yeah, but then she turns it. into him. Yeah. If you think about it, because he was the Lady in Lavender all. in the first film, he yeah. could have been her. That's true. And I, so... Upgrade. <laughs> I think it's probably just another example of he can do whatever the hell he wants. I yeah. think he likes just turning into chicks, but like, look at his tits. <laughs> that yeah. He shouldn't uh, be saying that about that Reggie, girl. Reggie, fuck the tall man. <laughs> not yet. Yeah, not yet. <laughs> when, I was, when I was a teenager, we had this game called Phantasmagoria. And it was a computer game, and what was so amazing about it was it had this rating system of violence and stuff, and the nudity was at a five. So everyone out of, out of, out of five. Oh. Awesome. Yeah, so like everyone wanted to play this game. Holy shit, Phantasmagoria. And we couldn't get too far into it because it was hard, and I only knew one dude who had a computer. <laughs> <laughs> it's like and, leisure, uh, leisure Suit Larry. Y'all ever played that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah but when, when Phantasmagoria was cool, I looked it up because I don't know what Phantasmagoria is, and it said a series of hallucinations in succession. And I thought, man, that's badass. That's pretty cool. And so that's what I think of when I think of Phantasm. Whenever I'm going like, this doesn't make any sense, I go, it is a bunch of hallucinations in succession. That's yeah. lazy yeah. writing. Yeah. <laughs> it's not lazy writing, it's beautiful poetry. It's a beautiful poetry. <laughs> um, the, there's something you forgot to mention about the chainsaw fight. It ended okay. in one of my favorite ways fights can end. If anybody knows my love of RoboCop, was mainly because he shot that guy's dick off. Mm-hmm. And this one, he finished off the chainsaw fight by chainsawing the guy's dick off. <laughs> chainsaw to the ground. <laughs> yeah, definitely a good move. That's a good love one. dick violence. Smart. You're really all dope. over the place, Colby. Like, you don't like dicks in your movie unless they're being crushed. The thing is, you, know, <laughs> you have, you have <laughs> serious hate for dicks. Yeah, no, and the thing is, you don't see their dicks, like, being shot off or, like, <laughs> chainsawed. You just know, like, got that motherfucker, you know? And even if they don't die, like... They're more. They're We're gonna figure you out. We're gonna figure you out. Know? Like, think about yeah. it. Like, you get shot. Like, your dick's gone. They're like, well, what's the point? Like, even if I beat this guy, who hey. cares? My dick's gone. No, okay, <laughs> like, you get to uh, live a fine life. Mm. <laughs> It'll stop you dead in your tracks. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> when I heard about that scene that Paul Verhoeven, the guy who directed RoboCop, he was supposed to originally he was supposed to target above her shoulder and shoot him in the face. And it said every time they would show the scene, like, he kept thinking, like, man, her legs keep spreading farther and farther apart. And he's like, wouldn't that be cool if RoboCop shot him in the dick? And movie <laughs> history was made. Like, he shot him right in the dick. History. <laughs> so pro-dick violence. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. What's your favorite coming to him? Like, if it's a good guy getting his dick stabbed, no, I'm against that. You know, like the guy getting his wiener pinched in Leprechaun. I didn't like that. <laughs> it's like, that poor guy got his wiener pinched. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think uh the greatest injustice. I think we've uh, is a we've all experienced a revelation of Colby's character. <laughs> <laughs> we know a little bit more about Colby. <laughs> Deeper Here's a here's mind. a story I want everybody to know. I was watching Robocop for the first time ever with Abe here. And I was even said to Abe before the movie started, I was like, wouldn't that be cool if RoboCop shot somebody in the dick? Having no idea. But why are you later always in talking about it? <laughs> he's why is that your first thought? Like, dick. man, he's got a gun. I hope he shoots somebody's dick. <laughs> because I feel like sometimes I got that coming. I feel like you think about that. I don't want them to die. Movie. Because once you get shot in the head, it's over. Once you get shot in the dick, you got to think for the rest of your life. Like, man, I really shouldn't have tried to rape that chick if I got the tip of my dick shot off by a robot. Yeah, all right, I'll give it to you. <laughs> this has been deep thoughts by no, no. Kathleen, where do you weigh in on dick violence? For it. <laughs> <laughs> Kathleen is for dick violence. Okay. 
Like teeth? That's the best part of the movie. Oh, and she oh, bites the guys. Good. Yeah, yeah put that waiter happy. Mm-hmm. He's a crap. <laughs> Raper <laughs> should always be severed. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. I agree. <laughs> oh, and Kathleen says it. Oh, I agree. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't say they were all rapists. You didn't say you liked them because they Yeah, the chainsaw guy wasn't trying to rape anybody. Yeah, he didn't rape <laughs> that. Why is he wearing that mask? What's he hiding? He can <laughs> rape his face. That's what he's hiding. He's got rapey Son eyes. Son of a bitch. Yeah. Yeah. I gotta wear this mask. Everyone will know I got rapey eyes. <laughs> yeah. All the girls swoon. He's so rapey. He's so rapey. <laughs> Anyway, segment. to finish up this <laughs> synopsis, uh, they're driving away in the in the hearse. Reggie is in the front seat with what is clearly a corpse woman. Uh, the car swerves and stops, and Reggie is pounding on the back window all covered in blood and fucked up Aww. in typical Reggie Bannister fashion. Um, <laughs> the car drives away with Liz and Mike in the back, freaked out. And who should open the little window or the little partition is the tall man. However, they were talking about how it was a dream. And they said, we just need to wake up. Yeah, because it's, mm. it's all a dream. They don't know. It's a fantastic it's a glorious well, And, the, and the, <laughs> the, uh, the alchemy lady pulled part of her head off. Yeah. That was how, that was the reveal. Yes, Ew, which is very cool. It looked awesome. Yeah. And hair mm. is all. Craig Nicotero. For each movie, Kathleen digs through all the dirt and slime of the filthy internet to bring us this week's terrifying trivia. Mostly just rip up IMBD. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> all right. Um, pay royalties now. <laughs> at the beginning, we all commented about how uh, Mike looked like a girl during the flashback sequence. Mm-hmm. And the truth is, they actually used the body of a 14-year-old girl because um, that poor guy. <laughs> a Michael Baldwin had aged so much since the first movie was shot. Mm-hmm. Brad Pitt originally auditioned for the role of Mike. Shit, the what? Fudge. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They passed on what? Brad they Pitt. Passed. For <laughs> <laughs> oh they have been really bad at Bannister or Reggie Bannister would be best friends. Could you <laughs> imagine? <laughs> I just know it. A Brad Pitt Reggie Bannister fucking team up. Yeah. Incredible. Stackable. Reggie'd still get all the girls. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, Abe had asked me why a Michael Baldwin had not been in this movie. And apparently Universal Pictures, um, their executives didn't want to let Michael Baldwin reprise his role because it had been so long since he'd been in the movie biz. So Don... They, sorry, my writing Coscarelli. is Don Coscarelli. Mm-hmm. Um, he wanted him to be in it and even had him audition, but the old, uh, role ultimately went to James Legro. Puffy Lips. Puffy Lips. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You'll all be relieved to know they bring him back for three and four. Mm-hmm. Oh, good. So, they learned their lesson. Yeah. Good. For better or worse, he's back for the rest. <laughs> okay. I say for better. Other people say for worse. We'll see. Well, and apparently he's still really bitter about Phantasm 2. Mm-hmm. He should be. Yeah. So like, shouldn't even be made. Or shouldn't have been made. I heard what's that one movie that John Cusack was in? We we told say, the story before. Oh, did I? Oh, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> She's our meet your monster historian. The moderator, I, I <laughs> sure. fact checker. My yeah. All right. What's my line? What's my, line? <laughs> my favorite tidbit is that um, Ed Gale, who plays one of the uncredited hooded dwarfs, is the man who played Howard T. Duck. In the Howard the Duck movie. Yes, for him. Yeah. Or bad for him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but, um, I've seen it. It's good for him. <laughs> <laughs> Did, are we going to address um, the bustling career of what's her name? Samantha Susie Phillips. Phillips. Samantha mm-hmm. Phillips. Yeah. Samantha Phillips we played the hitchhiking <laughs> corpse. Yeah. Yeah, and which was very, we call her small chested. Itty bitty titty committee. She's the president. <laughs> <laughs> But she was willing to show them off, which I appreciate. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful titties. 80s, man. This is in the 80s, right? Yeah. Beautiful titties. She's a very pretty yeah. girl. Mm-hmm. And then she oh, went yeah. on to a career. In busty tops. And yeah. she got a boob job. Yeah. And they look horrible. They look We've yeah. done our research. They look so good. Yeah. 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 So if you got look... a spot on, though. It's up for debate. But in the meantime, look up Samantha Phillips naked, because what else are you doing? <laughs> mm-hmm. You're at work, probably. Please don't do that. Yeah, <laughs> You're already going to get flagged for listening to this. <laughs> and it is time once again to meet your monster. Yes. We would call the tall man an alien. 
right? I would say. All, Seems all inter- to another planet. Dimensional traveler. Mm. Whether he's a from another planet or another dimension, he is alien mm. to this one. So. Mm. He is not from this world. Well, especially with that creepy thing coming out of his head. So that makes me wonder, like, what does everybody think? Is it magic or science? Can it be both? The spheres seem it's technological. Science. And, I mean, he's not like... There's nothing magical going on with the dwarves, like... He didn't like cast a spell. But what makes him more makes... scientific? Because yeah, like the, it's a res they use a resonating fork. It's apparently like some kind of sending, like, yeah. f- vibrating at some kind of frequency that lets him pass through the dimension. So is a tall man a shapeshifter? And so why the fuck does he appear as a tall man? Because he likes. Yeah, you think you pick a more convenient. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because Angus Scrim looks awesome. Does look yeah. awesome. That's that's all it takes. She goes, that dude is badass. Have you seen him walk? Come yeah, on. that first uh, in that first movie when he's just walking down the street, scary as shit. Mm-hmm. In the fourth film, you get more of an origin story on him. Really? But we'll save that for when we get there. All right. Yeah. Uh, here on Meet Your Monsters, we like to examine all forms of depravity, and so now for the mathematically perverted, the cold cat. This movie featured six boobs. Yeah, six boobs. Were they all the same? Girls' boobs? I believe so. Yeah. Did the blonde, did Liz ever show her boobs? No. no. She never She never even took off her mom jeans. Oh, or her gross turtleneck with yeah. her sweater. Yeah, because you see her, her boobs, she's in the rings. morgue, you see her boobs there. <laughs> yeah. Then you see her boobs when she's running up the stairs, and then you see her boobs in an already saw it in the second morgue scene, and then you see her when she was like rubbing them up on Reggie Bannister's head. Yeesh. Mm. Yeesh. Mm. That would have been sweet. That was gross. <laughs> With I their full clothes, sexy. Yeah, he was in jeans. I've never been bald, but I imagine like a boob run, rubbing across your bald head is just amazing. <laughs> <laughs> You'd like to think that after you go bald, you can still get boob rubbed. <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah, that's that's like the ultimate. If you Reggie go bald, gives all bald people, bald people hope. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, and there were eight bodies, one of which was a dick death. A d- mm. what? Dick death. Jeez. A death by dick. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he undicked that man. <laughs> it could have been to one side. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Can we call it a Dickensian? <laughs> what is it? Mm-hmm. Dick I'd say yes. <laughs> Usually people say that when they're referencing Charles Dickens, but oh. I thought it'd be funny. Yeah. <laughs> there was something. It's pretty esoteric. Sorry. I thought it'd shut up with the dick. <laughs> Uncultured swine around here. <laughs> oh, Philistines. Um, you didn't mention the the slight bush shot. Mm. Oh, slight, it was full on bush. Yeah, yeah. Please forgive me. Yeah, you saw um, yeah. Samantha Stevens. What was her name? Phillips. Phillips. You saw her bush ever so briefly. Hmm. Although I hear from uh, that a lot of that's not actually their bush in the like when they make those movies. It's like a, like a wig they put on top. So like on top of kit. the. Bush? No, because hers yeah. was trimmed into like a nice. Even with that, yeah. they do it so like it like covers their whole. It's like a patch of felt. Genitalia. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think the camera angle did the job. Well, this one. but yeah. that's why they always have like their legs close together, because like it like the whole like it covers their whole vagina, so like the oh, cast gosh. and crew don't see their if you, uh, chotch. You're yeah. telling me. That's yeah. They yeah. got some sort of like. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Beaver okay, okay. Yeah. remember yeah. Killer yeah. Joe in like the first scene in Killer Joe? Like she opens the door and you see Gina Gershon's bush. That mm-hmm. wasn't really her bush. They like put like a wig on top of like the whole genitalia. Some mysteries are better left yeah. <laughs> unexplored. I have, I've never seen the actual vagina in a movie. That bums me out. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, you know. It's playing uh, porno, so yeah, yeah, there's yeah. always another avenue to explore. Okay, and now we honor the artists and artistry that literally put the horror and horror movies with what we lovingly call special effects. <laughs> right. Oh, well, uh, yeah, the special effects were done by the <coughs> KNB EFX group, which is Robert Kurtzman, uh, Nicotero, and Howard Berger. Berger. Yeah, they've worked on over 400 films doing special effects. Yeah. They've won an Emmy for Frank Herbert's Dune, the sci-fi miniseries. Hey, that's cool. Yeah. And they got an Academy Award for the makeup on the first Chronicles of Narnia movie. Yeah. The, mm-hmm. That one was mostly Howard Berger because he likes to do animals and Greg Nicotero likes doing blood and guts. <laughs> How are they not cleaning out Emmys because of The Walking Dead? It's like oh, a good no, question. Yeah, I'm getting there. Oh, sorry, sorry. I know <laughs> they want. Oh, well, I guess I want to run here. <laughs> Mikatero does the makeup for The Walking Dead. He's also directed <coughs> and acted in it. Oh. 
and Kurtzman also wrote the original story for From Dusk Till Dawn and did the special effects for that movie as well. I so, remember Kurtzman? Uh, not Kirkman, the comic writer. I know, I was like, son, <laughs> these are names yeah, are similar. It's very similar. Yeah. You know, um, I thought it would come up in Kathleen's trivia, but no one really talked about the Sam Raimi joke. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Go Kathleen, ahead. would you care to... Well, Sam and who's the guy? Don Coscarelli. Yeah, they're really good friends. And so he was, um, there's a scene in this movie where the Undertaker guy is mashing up the bones so that they're turning into ash. And then they're putting him into a bag that says Sam Raimi. So it's a Sam Raimi ash character sequence. Or a... Reference. Reference, yeah. yeah. For, for the uneducated, Sam Raimi wrote and directed the first two Evil Dead movies in Army of Darkness. And Ash is the main character's name. Was there more special effects? Or that? For that was it, yeah. Okay. Uh, the films we discuss on this podcast are, hor- are horrifying, but sometimes real life is even more fucked up. Brace yourself for the nefarious news. Well, apparently... In Brazil, just the other day, right? Uh, recently, I don't that know. That was a couple months ago. So, apparently a man in Brazil was declared dead by doctors, but was discovered alive by his brother wriggling around in his morgue bag the next day. They they say it was a, a grave error <laughs> in the health <laughs> department. And then they had a, um, guy, a special guy there behind him with the drum set, and he's like, Tuts. <laughs> <laughs> Um, his we brother are arrived. mortified just when we heard this. <laughs> Some of this was just <laughs> his brother arrived the next day to dress him, his dead brother, uh, for the funeral and found him squirming around in there alive. They had already stuffed uh, wool in his nose and ears and tied his feet together. So can you imagine waking up in a bag? <laughs> like, Jesus. oh my god! Uh, he was conscious. Um, he was unable to speak, but he pinned a letter... Um, saying that um, it was a miracle and saying the blessed Irma Dulce um, was the one who brought him back. But uh, don't die in Brazil. Or don't, well, don't pass he, out in Brazil. Don't, don't even take, take a nap. nap. <laughs> <laughs> but he died not too long thereafter, right? I think he died. This like is two a different guy. Later. This guy is 54. Oh, okay. So this was, this was more happened, recently. I think one happened. One yeah, happened, I think one yeah. happened a while back, and it, then like, I heard The about guy was one. like on his deathbed. And no, this they guy is. Took him down the morgue, and then he died like a week later. But yeah. Yeah, this one is not. Think like that uh, scene in uh, Monty Python? <laughs> Bring out your dead. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> dead yet. <laughs> Have you guys ever seen The Serpent in the Rainbow? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've seen parts of it. It's it's about voodoo, and they blow this powder on your. It's made you know, from whatever. the pufferfish venom. Yeah, part. and it makes you look like you're dead. And there's this one scene. Is I don't know if it's Bill Pullman or somebody else in there. They're about to bury him. You just see like all these tears coming down because mm-hmm. they're like, Sque-. you get into Bill Pullman's head and he's just screaming like, I'm not dead, but he can't do it. He can't move. I'm like, oh god. There's a story that Wes Craven <coughs> tells in a documentary about making that movie, and one of the guys I don't remember his name. I just like a producer or something. He says to one of these voodoo priests that they had on set that he wanted to learn about voodoo, and the guy says to him, then you will. And the guy shortly after went absolutely crazy, and they had to fly him back to California. And months later, the only thing he could remember about the whole experience was that guy saying, "Then you will." Uh, uh, but the guy had been completely. You you don't fuck around with that. No kidding, like. I would. I know you look Kobe. I know you. I knew you were going to say that. Here's the thing, though. It's it's nothing supernatural. It's poison. Yeah. Well, you know they're fucking they poison the dude is what they do <laughs> oh, yeah. I would do that so yeah I mean that. you're gonna get beat up by Annabelle the demonic doll yeah. you're gonna that stuff just getting buried alive well and also the graveyard shift where that originally came from was um didn't they tie something around corpses uh, they put a bell their bell yeah and so if you heard the bell ringing you'd go and have to huh 
I said saved by the bell reference. Oh my God. <laughs> and if you heard the bell ring because you were on the graveyard the shift, you'd go and, and get saved by the bell. It's like the bell. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, who the fuck is thinking about high school? Like, wait a second, this is not. <laughs> you know, that's where that's they. That's where Miss Bliss went. That's where they get the expression uh, "dead ringer." Who was the original author who wrote um, the story like that? Where. Steve they King think wrote he's graveyard shift, didn't he? Well, yeah, but the he, he, he based Rainbow it was a on, movie. I mean, it was a book as well. Story. Like, I think Edgar Allan Poe wrote one, where it was a guy that thought he was dead, but then a single tear oh, drips from his I eye, just... and then they realize he's alive. And then <laughs> Stephen King did a modern version. Yeah, that sounds familiar. That's not sure premiere. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Little kids around so. Yeah. Hours of effort and creativity go into making a movie, and there's always some asshole just waiting to shit on it. And so on behalf of our underappreciated horror filmmakers, we are here to take revenge with the critical critique. My God, they've all gone. <laughs> okay, so nobody really got into detail with their negative reviews. Um, uh, Stefan Berger Stephenson of SBIS.IS his review, <laughs> shit you not, is, I really didn't get the point. <laughs> <laughs> but you gotta respect that. Why are you writing a movie review? <laughs> I don't you I can only come it. up with one fucking sentence. Uh. Um, and this one, I'm not, yeah, I can't be mad at Nick Shager of Lessons of Darkness. Um, there's little to enjoy about this second outing, save for Scrim's deliciously menacing specter of death. Kick him at that guy. That's true. It was awesome. Like he did do. I wish he would have liked the other parts of the movie better, but mm-hmm. at least he gave him credit for being awesome. Mm-hmm. There's yeah. another <laughs> critic who just said, nah, nah, nah. <laughs> "Steve, <laughs> Stefan, Nick, blow me." <laughs> what is the point of even typing any of that? You know, I had this thought the other day. Like, if I were to meet somebody, like, on a train, and they were I'd be like, oh, what do you do for a living? They're like, oh, a movie critic. I'd be like, fuck you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who the fuck you are you? you are? <laughs> Sit somewhere else, dickhead. Of course, of course, you know, you and I just last week spent an hour talking shit about Ninja, <laughs> Ninja Turtles. Turtles so. okay. I still need to hear that. <laughs> we need to post that while well, though. Again, though, I've specified... But at least we spent an hour talking about it instead of writing one fucking three-word sentence. And I specified, like, I feel like the movies we watched, the people did their best. It may have not produced the best product, but they did their best. With these other movies, it seems like they didn't give a fuck about it. They didn't care what they were You can tell the difference. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel like with this one, they they were trying to do something that they would all appreciate. With Ninja Turtles, they were trying to make a buck. Yeah. Yeah. Which they did. Which they because did. of you quite a few bucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping it'd be good. They got six dollars out of me. I'm not that bummed about it, you know. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm pretty bummed about it. <laughs> yeah. I could use that six bucks. You definitely should have snuck. Yeah, Taco Bell quesarito big box. <laughs> so. Yeah. Serious Texas barbecue. Please be responsible. <laughs> Please. Okay. Or Taco Bell. I'll take Taco Bell. No. <laughs> <laughs> Let's, Let's take anything. Kathleen just blew our fucking Taco Bell. <laughs> 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 Absolutely not. <laughs> Taco John's. <laughs> there we go. I'm with her on that. It's regional. Uh, I, I would like Del Taco. Taco. Oh. It's no. <laughs> no, the Taco. My brother was in high school. He worked at uh, Taco John's headquarters. And we had my grandma convinced that he invented the <laughs> potato burrito. <laughs> she like, <laughs> told all her friends. <laughs> <laughs> really, he was like a janitor there. <laughs> I just picture him toiling away in the lab. Yeah. God damn it. He's so close. Right here potato, potato. It's like uh, <laughs> those Domino's commercials where the dude invented the Parmesan bread. Yeah. Like, are you telling me that like none of you ever thought of putting Parmesan on some bread bites? And, like, <laughs> Meanwhile, every pizza place has Parmesan on yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to put on the yeah. fucking thing. Yeah, we shouldn't be talking about <laughs> Let's get meta about murder with Matt's themes and tropes. Oh. I don't have any. Son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I wasted all that enthusiasm. Um, no, but... I was um, like, where was that on my show? <laughs> <laughs> Is there a trope of 
old men still having it with young ladies, yeah. which is bullshit. <laughs> yeah, there was. <laughs> no, <laughs> you cannot tell me. No, I'm just in. in I think independently look. wealthy Reggie Bannister. Yeah, she was. <laughs> she she was that some, ice cream money. She, she was some that scrub money. on the side of the road. And he picked her up like at least she could do. In a The least she could do. Cut. You need to back up. <laughs> no, As no, gas no. Gas. He doesn't deserve <laughs> sex because he has a car. That's Colby. right. <laughs> well, it's a Hemi Cuda, man. <laughs> <laughs> that car. Um, I'm not even a car guy, but I'd fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> How big's that back seat? <laughs> <laughs> not big at all. <laughs> 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 Oh, he'd be like, oh, I was talking to you. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, um, King yeah, of Queens. Huh? Or, you know, it's like, yeah. she would never be with Kevin James, because he... Yeah. It's kind of like... He might be lovable. Yes. You never see, like, ugly He's probably got, like, a summer sausage. Yeah, like, I mean, you can oh, tell all those shows <laughs> are written by men, though, because yeah, it's true. like... You know, they're all dumb. Kimberly, are you telling me that then, there's no women sitting around fantasizing about fat, ugly dudes <laughs> with shitty jobs <laughs> that complain all the fucking time about I their wives? Say, though, when I was in the Navy, there was this girl, and she was an attractive girl, and she was she was telling me one day, she's just like, oh, I just love bald guys. <laughs> I'm not even joking. Like, like, she, like, she I love like, rubbing my tits all over their face. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it's so smooth. Yeah, so they're out there. All right, they're out there. I think that, you know, this movie kind of got neutered by the studios because this one was uh, produced by Universal and they got a huge budget for it, at least bigger than the first budget. They got $3 million for this one. I could tell because they blew up yeah. three separate houses. I mean, you could see all that money on the screen. <laughs> it was good. Yeah. But the studio told them to make it less abstract and no dream sequences. Except so. for that one. Except for the one it's at the, the end, I guess. Well, the, which is how they were communicating, so not having any the, dreams. Which <laughs> mean? <laughs> and you know, and like, and when they did that, it just made it a lot more straightforward. There wasn't really too many big themes here. I mean, you really don't even know what they're fighting for at this point. Like, Vengeance. he killed their his yeah. brother, but they, they don't never mention him. Yeah. And they killed Reggie's family. They mentioned that a couple times, yeah. but it's sort of unemotional they don't really have yeah because sort of... you've never seen their faces you don't know if it was like his wife and kids or his he was still living yeah, with his, his mom and dad yeah, his which cousins I believe. were in town it was distant relatives yeah. uh, one kind of theme or I don't know if it's oh, or whatever God. that I really loved was like that uh, when they realized that the shit is real like they stopped denying it and they're like alright well let's yeah. go load up oh, on gosh. some guns and like yeah like, all right, yeah. this shit's going That's down. Like, let's fuck some shit up. Got raised because yeah. it went from like he put that like shotgun shell on the hammer and used it to open the door, and I was like, I'm gonna rig up a fucking flamethrower with <laughs> this guy. That water. They money. had a fucking yeah. grenade and like pop can. Wait, it, it kind of reminds me of Terminator too. He's like the Sarah Connor because they just spent that whole time. Must have just spent that whole time in the mental institution preparing, Doing trying to figure out how to like how to make weapons yeah. to kill these things. He just spent that whole time preparing himself. To go kill the tall man. Like and Sarah they Connor. ended up getting him with some goddamn embalming fluid. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hydrochloric acid. Yeah. But still, they had like they got their rigged up their four barrel shotguns, they had grenades, guns, and they're like, oh, get him with some acid, I guess. Their, yeah, their grenades are the mother of, fire of invention. Fire. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Although I must say, Sarah Connor was in way better shape. Hmm. Like, wow. Well, yeah. You never saw Reggie Bass check out that vest on his <laughs> fucking really barrel tight. chest. Yeah. <laughs> Biceps like this. Yeah. Yeah. Like watermelons. Colby wouldn't say they were too tight. <laughs> and just how studly is it that he can actually bang a chick through jeans? Yeah. You know? When well, she had underwear on, too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right? Studly or improbable. <laughs> he just looked at her vagina and she had an orgasm. <laughs> uh, I read an article one time with um, David Carradine, and he said that he had girls have orgasms from going down on him. And I'm like, oh, I'm mm. sure. <laughs> sounds a little far-fetched mm. to me, buddy. It's like, Who am I to question? Like, the funny thing is, David, I had an orgasm reading about you. Had an <laughs> orgasm. Yeah. Uh, who am I to question fucking Kane from Kung Fu? Well, I but I was just like, that sounds like and bullshit. If Even as a kid, when I read it, I was like, that sounds like some bullshit. And if that's true... A bunch of women would have wanted to blow him instead of him trying to like hang himself and whack off at the same Aww. time, which is how he went. Maybe out. he got bored of getting blown. All the fucking guy died trying to Aww. jack off. Aww. How dumb do you have to be? Die whacking. He's, he's trying to mix it up. He was tired of being yeah. blown all the time. Yeah. 
he's banged so many chicks <laughs> in so he's many so ways jaded, man. that he's he's happier just doing the fucking. How, g- how good could that be? Hanging yourself and whacking it like I don't know because I don't try that. <laughs> <'cause>, <laughs> like, you're risking dying. Like plenty of people have died doing. Here's what it. I'm gonna say. That's it must be pretty good. <laughs> for for everybody out there listening who might want to jerk off while they hang themselves. Because there are those people. Get a spotter, man. Just like, yeah. just like at the gym. But you know what? I had Get this thought when I heard it. Because like, he was standing on a chair and like once it slipped off the chair. I'm like, why, why didn't he just you... like tie a belt and like, put it in a door jam and just lean forward so he choked himself that way? Like if he passed out, he would fall backwards and he wouldn't be like dead. You know? Yeah, I don't know. He just <laughs> wasn't thinking. <laughs> hey, he, wanted, he, needed to, he needed to spice it up even more. Yeah. <laughs> and apparently um, Robert Carradine... Uh, his brother seems to think it was some sort of um, setup. Mm-hmm. I guess he was talking about this on Howard Stern. Probably because he doesn't want to be it, like, yeah, my brother died cranking one out at 75. Are you kidding? He's got everybody yelling nerd at him everywhere he goes. I doubt he cares about that. <laughs> but you never know. Nerd. Yeah. But he was one of the nerds? Yeah, he was the main nerd, Lewis. Really? Bobby Carradine? Yeah. What? Yeah. Are you sure? Of course. Well, I thought that this is what I do call. <laughs> you were at my brother, party. I thought his brother. You watched the movie here. I thought his brother was on Dexter. He was. He's and got he a was in brothers. Nerds. No, a different. Oh, it's his brother. Okay, yeah. that makes sense. Okay, yeah. all right. There's a few Carradines out there. Okay. Yeah. Like Baldwin's. Yeah. <laughs> Only way better looking than the Baldwin. <laughs> yeah, because there was David Carradine, Robert Carradine, and the Dexter one was. Anybody? Bridget. Anybody? Um, Jack. I have no Rick. idea. Ah, it'll come to that. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Eduardo. Eduardo. Eduardo Carradine. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> yeah. Okay, um, now the fun starts with everyone's favorite pieces and parts. Who had a favorite? Man, there were so many. There was a cool part where um, they're starting their road trip and they get to the one cemetery and it's just all empty graves. That, that was, was pretty awesome. cool. That was an amazing scene. That was pretty yeah. great. He wrapped the priest's rosary around his neck and hung him by it. That was pretty badass. Like, oh, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. It reminded me of that part in the X-Men cartoons, the Apocalypse, and he's like, I must fall beyond Newton, so they all be on you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But what was cool about that, too, and maybe <laughs> that... Apocalypse. Thank you. <laughs> maybe that was sort of magical, because there certainly wasn't any science going on there. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Magnets. Fucking <laughs> magnets. How do they work? I yeah. liked when the tall man's eyes popped. Like popcorn. Uh, mine was when they go to that. I guess it was an abandoned church, and they find the girl in the cloak, and she's like got tape over her mouth, and then they take the cloak off, and there's that weird thing coming out of her oh, back. It's like a thing. caterpillar or something. Yeah, I had mm. never seen anything like that before. I Ooh. saw. A fr- wasn't it? okay. Not to bring up Freddy versus Jason again and tonight. Mm. Yeah, there was didn't like he a like wormy? Yeah, that's what it reminded me of. So mm-hmm. They stole that from Phantasm. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Ooh, you know what I liked was when because yeah, I was thinking all the time, is he ever gonna use that fucking four barrel shotgun? And then he shoots four of those little midges at the same. <laughs> <movie>. That shit <laughs> was awesome. <laughs> little people. Little people. <laughs> no, they're midges no. because they're monsters. Mm, oh. oh. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. What? Oh, uh. He just got us booted off YouTube, right? <laughs> Do you think mm. any Space little speech. person's gonna uh, be pissed because like that little monster was a little person, not a midget? Yes. I identify with that. little We don't get to. Weed. We don't know. We're not them. We can't use that word. We can't speak that <laughs> Yeah. We're putting so the, the social... <laughs> the, the squash the squashed people. Yeah, thank you. Have a favorite? No. Squash, the oh. squashed people? No. I like that better. <laughs> Boy, there's so many cool parts. My favorite part of this movie is just the road trip. I, mm-hmm. I like when they stopped to make their weapons and then they just like took off on the road. I, I love that they had a, a purpose and they were off to fight evil. I think that shit's awesome. Yeah, it was who awesome. said was it you or Derek who said they got a blade trunk in the back of that their was me. Yeah. Yeah, 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 trunk like blade. Yeah, they just have all kinds of crazy weapons. Oh Reggie had that boogie down hat. Remember that? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was kinda of, I thought it said boogie booger queen or something. <laughs> but no. That's pretty cool. His hair um, got way better. That was my favorite part, I guess. Mm. Than the first movie. <laughs> yeah, they started talking about my favorite part was the part where they finally decided to get real about the shit and <laughs> shit's happening. Let's let's go fuck some shit up. Is that what yeah. So I, I was. You already <laughs> said that uh, the original Mike. He's in. Uh, he returns for the third and fourth one. Um, I don't know. I, I think it's kind of a theme that the fourth movie is is usually in space. 
It seems. <laughs> and this one, it, that space? fourth one. Well, I mean, Damn. the other dimension is technically <laughs> space because it's another planet. I guess. Now, is that the one with the frisbee with the nails in it? That's part three. Part three. Okay. Yeah. So they actually go to his world or whatever. I guess in the well, you see I, mean, I don't want to ruin too much of the fourth one, but I guess they like travels to keep like that's a, like uh, Mike travels through the dimensions a lot. Oh, oh you know so. what? That Alien Four was in space too. <laughs> <laughs> no way. <laughs> um, and there's going to be a fifth one. Uh, there's a trailer for it, and I saw on a web a news website that the release date is supposed to be this October seventh. Yeah. What? Yeah, in so, yeah. Straight to video. Well, who Straight knows? to video, probably. probably. Yeah. That's why I was trying to get through these Phantasm movies yeah. in a timely the, fashion. The trailer me and Derek watched, it's not going to be on the big screen, I don't think. Mm. You don't think? Yeah, I wouldn't. The, the special wouldn't effects aren't really that great. Phantasm 4, I don't think, got a nationwide yeah. theatrical release. Cool Our TV is pretty big. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> And um, the fifth one is the first one's not going to be directed by Don Coscarelli. It's going to be directed by David Hartman, who um, apparently directs a lot of um, so cartoons. <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't know, which maybe. <laughs> but um, he's directed like uh, the Transformers Prime cartoon back in 2010, yeah. Um, and yeah, Astro Boy, which I always liked the. Um, and Jackie Chan Adventures, which was all right. Yeah, it was all right the man. Godzilla TV series. Oh, didn't watch that one. It was yeah, it was pretty crappy, but <laughs> it was all right. And um, yeah, and uh, he was actually he's actually an actor too, David Hartman. And he was in another movie that I love. I don't know. I love the book anyway. John dies at the end. Oh uh, yeah, it was pretty weird. Yeah, the movie. The movie kind of yeah. sucks because it like cuts it out did. a like like eighty percent of the book. The I book like is amazing. Read the book. Also directed by Don Coscarelli. Really? Is that the one mm-hmm. that David Wong wrote? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. He's did awesome. you read the sequel? He's the guy who. Uh, was no, the spider no, I haven't yeah, yet. But I want to. So the book's good though. Yeah. 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 Definitely read it. John dies at the end. Yeah, so that's kind of it for the sequels. Everybody, check out Phantasm Five if you find a way to. Yeah. Oh, we, we, will. <laughs> we will. We will Love find a way. Always you. finds a way. <laughs> I tell you, that is one that I would uh, I would take the day off from work for. So. Oh, well. I fucking love right. the Phantasm movies. I always have. Phantasm Dish Day. All right, yeah. I'm down. <laughs> I'll be Not like, if Alan's <laughs> listening to this, I'm really excited. Just so. kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah. I'm not. I'm gonna. What <laughs> <laughs> I'm Like it's my birthday. I'm leaving. <laughs> In closing, to feed the sun god with junk food movie dialogue, we offer unto you the Quetzal quote. <laughs> Who's got a good quote? I got one where they were pull up next to the tall man in the car. Uh, was it Michael? He goes, "Well, shoot the fucker." It was my it was my favorite part. It kind of goes with that where. He's like, ready to says, let's kick some ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fucking A. Let's. Surprised everybody's favorite quote isn't just boy. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't hit us with a whole lot of boys. It was one at the beginning, and I think it was a flashback from the last one, but mm. it still counts. It does, absolutely. Yeah. I'm not going to count it. <laughs> the, the Why don't you go count your dicks? <laughs> I count everything. Yeah. There's a part where the little Jawa grandma is chasing Liz, and Liz hits her in the face with a vase. She goes, "Sorry, grandma," <laughs> and then just does not give any kind yeah. of a shit after that. <laughs> You're right, Dad. Hmm. I liked Grandpa better. That's yeah. what she's <laughs> Matt, you get one? Uh, mine was one of the spheres that just like bored through his mouth, and then the one blonde chick was just like, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> she was like completely bored by the whole situation. <laughs> it's kind of, it's kind of like war, it's just desensitized. Yeah, she's seen a lot. <laughs> My quote was when um, the tall man confronts the priest in the hallway and he hangs him by his, his rosary, and uh, while he's hanging there, he says, you think when you die you go to heaven? You come to us. And I think that is a perfect quote from the tall man because it is the absolute pinnacle of what he's all about. Mm-hmm. When you die, you come to me. <laughs> and come and work in my orchards. Yeah. And, then I had, <laughs> and then I had another one. Mike said, uh, sometimes he sets traps for us. And sure enough, he did. He did, yeah. <laughs> okay, does anybody else have any uh, any closing news they want to talk about? Any uh, 
there was something I wanted to mention, which was um, the strain, the fucking strain. Is it yeah. good? If strain anybody's awesome. not watching that, they should be. It mm-hmm. is amazing. Because last time you guys said it was pretty, it wasn't very good, right? Well, no, it was, I, it was good. I mean, it was good uh, compared to most shit on TV these days. But the, <laughs> I just thought the first two episodes, like, I was a little worried that it was going to be boring. Is it better? It's than, gotten better. Yeah, I thought that because they, they were doing a lot of the build up, and I thought that it was just going to be like, because you never know with like TV shows nowadays, mm-hmm. they make True. them all like twenty six goddamn episodes for the <laughs> season. Like, they're gonna, I thought they're gonna stretch this shit out forever. Mm. But now nah, they're down to business now. Yeah. Nice. yeah, it's got everything. I think I was telling you this. It's got everything going for it that The Walking Dead does, in the sense that like the whole city is overrun by these creatures. Every, you know, humanity is is kind of, at least in this city, kind of frayed. And the only difference though is there's a villain. As where with The Walking mm. Dead, they really there's nothing to fight. You know, except wow. each other and the zombies. In this, they've got these zombie-like vampires that are running around just fucking everybody up. And they have the actual villains, the Dracula type character. It's amazing. It's better than cops. Bad boys is bad boys. <laughs> kind of cops. That one. Yeah. Oh, what are we going to do? Bad boys. I watched so much cops answer. reloaded today. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. Answer yes. <laughs> I watched about four hours of cops reloaded today. So did I. It was <laughs> fantastic. That's four hours of my day. <laughs> I'm gonna go with the strain over over cops, but. Mm. That is the end of Meet Your Monsters for this week. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out with me, and thank you at home for listening. If you want to follow along, next week's movie will be Return of the Living Dead. All right. (laughs) See you then. Boob count's going to be through the roof. Mm -hmm. If I may quote the Mindy Cowling show, go to bed.